Hey guys, what's up? So welcome to my news channel. So starting from the first news, the Kashmir outreach, the MEP visit has not helped fix the message and the messenger. In the first visit by the foreign dignitary to Jammu and Kashmir after the government's decision to notify Article 370 members of the European Parliament, we stayed the valley this week. Given the criticism of the India's move in the Europe and the United States banning government saw this as an opportunity to present their case to an influential international audience and change the narrative. But it has not quite turned out that way. There were three issues with the visit. The first was the composition of the group. Most of the parliamentary belong to the right-wing parties of their respective countries. Some have a history of the controversial statements and positions, including on Islam. This limits the appeals of the India's message to select political quarters and could in fact lead to the critics of the India's Kashmir policy, especially the liberals and the left in the West doubling down on their attacks. The second was the nature of the visit. Both the European Union and the Ministry of External Affairs clarified that this was not an official visit. This means that it lacked the legitimacy of an official delegation. The fact that the visit had actually had been organized by a little-known non-government organization, which could promise a meeting with Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the Kashmir visit to the MEPs, actually diminishes in its credibility. The optics of the visit was the third issue. Life in Kashmir is not normal. There is a shutdown for most of the day. Mainstream political leaders remain under detention and there is a sudden anger in the absence of the political engagement. The fact that India's own opposition leaders have not been allowed into the valley dampened the visit even more. The core problem is that India's messaging on Kashmir has gaps. It has made a strong case for the revocation of the Article 370 and for most part the international community has both recognized and this is irreversible that it is India's internal affair. It also understands India's concern on terrorism. But the crackdown on civil liberties and detention of the political leaders is hard to justify. If India wants a more positive message to go out, it will need to take steps swiftly to restore normalcy even while tackling violence. India will then find it easier to get more credible messengers to relate its case in the wider international community. Move to the next news. India's deepening Saudi engagement. Riyadh's tax export for Delhi's Kashmir move and robust energy ties there positive. India's sustained outreach to key powers in West Asia has resulted in the launch of a strategic partnership council by India and Saudi Arabia during the Prime Minister in the body visit to the kingdom this week. This new body, comprising two mechanisms headed by the foreign ministers and the commerce ministers of both sides, will guide and monitor relations in key areas such as energy, security, and trade. India is one of eight countries with which Saudi Arabia is forging strategic partnership under its vision. 2030 policy. The joint statement issued at the end of the Mr. Modi visit had a reference to the categorical rejection of all forms of interference in the internal affairs of countries. Experts see this as Saudi Arabia's tax support for the India's decision to revoke the special status of Jammu and Kashmir. This is particularly significant because Pakistan, a traditional Saudi ally, has responded strongly to the one in February. Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates had also played a great role in reducing the tension between the India and Pakistan. India and Saudi Arabia also took several steps to transform their relations in the energy sector from a bilateral one to a strategic partnership. This including an agreement between India's strategic petroleum reserve limited and Saudi Arabia and discussions on taking forward the project to build the world's largest greenfield refinery in Maharashtra. Saudi Arabia is currently India's second largest source of energy after the Iraq, given India's inability to buy oil. From Iran, as a result of the United States sanctions, this energy relationship will continue to be vital. Strategic and energy ties will have both sides focused on achieving the potential in the foil of the trade and investment. So, move to the next news. RTI 2.0 eroding a valid right. Fifteen years after the enactment of the Right to Information Act, the RTI regime is set to play a fresh innings in the future on October 25th. The Union government notified new rules for fixing tenure. Salaries and service condition of information commissioners in the Central Information Commission and State Information Commissions. In July, the Center had passed a bill to give itself full authority for deciding tenure and salaries of information commissioners at the Center as well in the states. There is a strange anomaly in the change in the salary structure for the Central and State Information Commissioners earlier. All Central Information Commissioners were paid the same salary, which was equivalent to that of the Central Selection Commission. And Supreme Court judges under the new rule, however, only the Chief Information. Commissioner will be entitled to the sal earlier salary while the salaries of other information commissioners will be equated with that of the secretaries. 
In the government of India, this means that the salary of the Central Information Commissioner will be reduced from 2.0 lakh to the 2.25 lakh. All rules governing the secretaries pertaining to their leave and leave travel allowance will now be applicable to the Information Commissioners. But here is the strange part. While deciding to give more to the Central Information Commissioner than other Information Commissioners, the new rules have removed the salary disparity in the state. It had to existing between the state chief information commissioner and other information commissioners. Now salaries of all state information commissioners, including the state chief information commissioner, will be equated with the salary of a secretary in the goal earlier. The state chief information commissioner salary was equated with that of the CEC. Double steps were at the parliamentary standing committee deliberations during the formulation of the RTA Act. The committee, which comprised members of the parliament from various political parties, ruled out that the salary and perks of the Central Information Commissioners should match that of the CCs and the SC judges. To bestow upon the Information Commissioners status and autonomy benefiting their post, the second indication of the erosion of the status and autonomy of Information Commissioners is evident from the reduction of their tenure from five years to three. Since the power revision of rules is that with the center, extensions can be given that the government's decision uh, to be acceptable commissioners. This is a huge blow to the autonomy of the commission. The center has several cultivated the independence and autonomy of an individual information commissioner with the commission by making them subordinate to the chief information commissioner, which was not investigated in the original RTA Act of the 2005. The chief was first to make the equals, but now he will be act like a head of the department. This will weaken not just the Commission, but is also individual information commissioners. With the propagation of the new rules and the new center are getting to sell the power to change them, the federal scheme of the distribution of the powers as per the original RTA Act has been weakened. The states, after all, have the powers to decide the salary. First and tenure of their commissioners, the amended rules, dilute to the spirit of the original Act. The RTA regime is at crossroads today. The rules will diminish the importance of the commissions and the commissioners. They will dilute their authority to go senior bureaucrats for delay of obstruction in the furnishing information waste departments. Information officer will also take the orders of the commission seriously. By making the center of information commissioners senior to the information commissioners, every successful government would like to appoint a central information commissioner of, uh, out, from outside. This will lead to an unhealthy practice in, in a quasi-judicial setup. The chief should be chosen on the basis of the seniority. There was also a uh, Clear when retired Chief Justice was invited as governor, this trend new continues, with the former Central Information Commissioner being appointed administrator of the new formed Union Territory of the Lak within a year of his retirement. It may be pointed out he is a lateral entrant, superseding very competent information commissioner in the commission. A persistent complaint from civil society and other stakeholders has been the crowding of the commission with the bureaucrats. There really are the non officials inducted, especially at the center with the change in rules the government will even more comfortable having bureaucrats information commissioners. In the states required, senior most bureaucrats will be the best place to join as the state chief information commissioner in similar rank and pay. There have been vigorous protests against the trend by the civil society members and they have threatened to move path as a last resort. So if you like the channel, so kindly subscribe to it.